Hallelujah. 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 Thank God for his presence in our lives. For allowing you and I once again to witness another blessed day in his presence. God be glorified in our lives. And today we are reading from the book of Matthew, chapter 3, verses 13 to 17. Matthew 3, 13 to 17. And here we see the baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ by John the Baptist. If you read from verse 1, it says, In those days John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make it his path straight. And it goes on. And it says that then Jerusalem, all Judea, and all the regions around the Jordan went out to him and were baptized by him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. Let's stop there. Confessing their sins. What does that mean? That was John baptized for repentance. What will happen is the people will come, having been convicted of sin, having heard the preaching of John, because it was mightily anointed by God, then they will feel sorry for their sins, they will feel the need to be to come close to God, they will come, and John will dip them in the water, and before they will go into the water, they will make a public declaration that they are now declaring to walk with God, to follow God, and to live all their sinful lives. And from the moment they come out of the water, there will be new creatures, new people in God. In God. And even in many churches that still do that today, people, before they are baptized, they will make a public declaration of the kind of life they were leading before, and that now they have decided to follow Jesus. And then they will be dipped into water and come out, singing and praising God. And in many churches, when they come out, many people receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, what is the significance of baptism? Because many people don't understand why do people have to be baptized. Now, we see that John did this, that people repent and make a new, a turn a new leaf in their lives. Now, was when they make a public decision, they're going to follow God. Of necessity, they had to turn away from their wicked lives and follow God in purity and righteousness. Why did they have to be dipped into water to do that? Why couldn't they just say it and continue their lives? Because baptism is an essential right that God has commanded that we must all do. You see, so much so Jesus himself said John the Baptist had to do it. Because if John the Baptist had not baptized Jesus, many people would say, after all, Jesus was baptized. So I don't need to be baptized. You see? Now, baptism is symbolic of a death because it involves a burial. So the person who comes to confess his sins before God is dead in sin. But now he's saying that once he's baptized, he's going to turn a new leaf and turn towards God. So when the person goes into water, usually it's done in the river. It should be done in the river. That river is supposed to carry the old man of sin. The man who was previously a sinner, rebelling against God's authority, when he's dipped in that water, the water is like a burial ground. When he's dipped in that water, symbolically the water now buries him and carries that old man away, the old man of sin and depravity. And when he comes out, it's like a resurrection. The new man in Christ comes out of the water. And as I said, many people receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit when that happens. The power of God comes upon them. When they truly confess their sins in sincerity and truth. So it represents a death, a burial, and a resurrection. You know, Jesus Christ died and was resurrected on the third day. So that's the essence of baptism. The death of the old man of sin. The old man of sin is the one before, that goes before the world. Before, uh, into the water, but then the new man is the one that comes out. Having made the co confession, public confession, that now he's going to follow Christ. It's like 
Okay, I'm the old man. I was the alcoholic. I was a fornicator. I was a drug dealer. I was a womanizer. But now I'm prepared to die and let this old man flow away with the water. And a new man in me was now I've changed. I've decided to follow Christ who will come out of that water. See? So symbolically, the, oh, the water that river Jordan, or whatever river it is, carries that old man of sin away. And the new man is come out. Why? Because that old man has been carried away. He's been washed away. And the new man now comes out. He said, Behold, the old has gone, the new has come. So that was what John the Baptist did. He made the people come to confess their sins, to, to promise a new life in Christ. And they were dipped into the water and then came out new creatures. That's what it meant that prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Because the people have been prepared for the arrival of Jesus Christ on the scene. You know, John the Baptist came preaching repentance so that the people could repent of their sins before Jesus Christ came and began to speak to them and preach to them and deliver them and heal them. So he prepared the people. Just like uh, you want to buy a building or uh, you want to build a building on the ground, you have to clear the ground first, right? Remove all the grass, remove all the weeds, remove all the bushes there, then you can begin to build your house. So Jesus Christ, uh, John the Baptist, he cleared the ground for the building of the house. So Jesus Christ came to build the house. So if you had not prepared the people, the people will not be prepared to receive Jesus Christ. By the time Jesus Christ came on the scene, the hearts are already convicted of sin. They were already turned to God, so they received him gladly because John the Baptist had already prepared them for that. Verse 8 says, Therefore bear fruits. But so when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, these were the religious people of the day. He said to them, Brood of vipers, who want you to flee from the wrath to come? Can you imagine describing the people of God as a brood of vipers? Those very poisonous snakes. He said, Who want you to flee from the wrath to come? Why? They came to Yonderbad because they felt the fire of heaven on them. You know, snakes hate fire. It's one thing that they hate most, fire. So when the Yonderbad came preached, they felt the fire of hell coming against them. And they all ran out of their holes and came to be baptized of John so that they wouldn't be burned up. But he said, therefore, bear fruits what they have to show that you have repented. Many people claim to repent of their sins. They cry to God and the next day, they go back to the same old sins. That is not repentance. Repentance is making a U-turn from the path of hell and destruction you are going through right now and turning towards the path of heaven, the path of holiness, the path of denial, the path of righteousness. So they laid a path before me, the path of righteousness. That's what the plan of God is for you and I. And it says, even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees, therefore every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. You see? That's the fire of hell. I indeed baptize you with water, verse 11, unto repentance. But he who is coming after me, that's Jesus Christ, mightier than I, than, than I, whose sandals are not worthy to carry, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. With the Holy Spirit and fire. And when did that happen? On the day of Pentecost. He saw cloven tongues of fire on the apostles in the upper room and they were baptized it means they were buried inside the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit covered them and the result was they began to speak with heavenly heavenly language. Let's go to um, James 4 verse 7. James 4 verse 7 and Hebrews 1:14. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Okay, is someone ready there? Hebrews 1 4. Yes. Are they not all ministering spirits and put to minister for those who will inherit the salvation? That's it. Yes, of salvation. That's us. Angels and ministering spirits. And, and then James 4 uh, James 4 7. Therefore, submit to God. Yes. Resist the devil, uh -huh. and he will flee from you. I say, resist the devil, he will flee from you. You know, you have to resist the book of Acts. Um, Acts chapter 2 says, When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all going to call in one place. 
and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared unto them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled or baptized with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. See? That's the manifested evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will speak a heavenly language unbeknown to you. See, and it's fire, you feel the heat of the Holy Spirit upon you. So, then Jesus himself came from Galilee to John and the Jordan to be baptized by him. So, apparently John had been preaching repentance and Jesus heard about it and Jesus came. Now, when John the Baptist saw him, he said, no, 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 Jesus, I cannot baptize you. Why did he say that? Say, you are the one that needs to baptize me. And are you coming to me? John the Baptist said that because baptism is only for sinners. People who are sinned against God, who are not ready to repent and turn to God. That's what it is for. And he knew by the Spirit that this Jesus had never committed any sin. He knew by the Spirit that this man is the Lamb of God that came to take care of the sins of the world. And that he didn't need to be baptized because he had not committed any sin. That's why I was so surprised that you know, Jesus, I cannot baptize you. You are the one that should be baptizing me because I'm a sinner. I'm of the earth here from heaven. And you want me to baptize you? Then see the answer of Jesus. Jesus answered and said to him, Let it be so now. For for us is fit for us to fulfill all righteousness. What did Jesus mean by that? He meant that. Even though, John, you are correct, that I don't need to be baptized because I haven't committed any sin. I don't need to confess any sin before you or anybody else. But so that in future people will know the importance of this act as a righteous act, baptize me. That from this moment on, every human being would need to be baptized for repentance of their sins. Because if you had said, oh, you're right, John, that's it, I don't need to be baptized, many people will refuse baptism. They'll say, no, Jesus was not baptized. That is not in the Bible. Why should I be baptized? Now, this baptism is very important because only adults can make a confession of their sins. Children cannot confess their sins. So this act in many churches where they bring children and uh, the pour and sprinkle holy uh, water on them is purely tradition. There is no biblical basis for it. You can only be baptized truly when you are old enough to know you have sinned and when you can confess it. So the real baptism is one done as an adult in the river. That is the way it should be done. As a child, one, you have not committed any sin. You are, you are not even at the age of uh, accountability yet. So how can you confess any sin? So when they drop this water on your feet, drops on your head, it means nothing really. You see? But people have done this for years and nobody can stop it. It will continue to eternity. People, people like tradition, nobody questions why little children have been baptized. It's just a traditional act. But the real baptism is one where you actually go into the water, confessing your sins and coming out as a new man is turned to Christ. So then he allowed him. So John the Baptist baptized Jesus Christ. Now, John the Baptist has said earlier that Jesus Christ was going to baptize us with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And we read that in the book of Acts just now. So Jesus is a baptizer as well himself, but his baptism is not with water, but it is of the Holy Spirit. So you need both. You need both the water baptism and the baptism with the Holy Spirit. How do I know that? Let's go to the book of John. John chapter 3. So many will say, oh, I don't need to be water baptized or I'm already baptized in water. Why do I need the Holy Spirit baptism again? Well, they're wrong. You need both of it. Both those things need to be done. That's why Jesus said, let for all righteousness sake. Now, this is an act which is righteous. 
which God ordained, which should be done. Nobody can be exempted from this. Now, John chapter 3 said, um, when Nicodemus came to Jesus to ask, to ask him, it says that uh, John chapter 3 is starting from verse, um, let's see, verse, okay, verse 3 says, John 3, 3 says, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Okay, and the Buddha said, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter a second time his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water, you see, and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So you can be born again and see the kingdom of God from afar off, but until you are born of water and the spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. It's a big difference. So the second process, second stage, after being born again, is to be water baptized and spirit baptized. That's what it just meant, that unless you are born of water and the spirit. So the baptism of water and baptism of the Holy Spirit. That person cannot enter the kingdom of God. Same. So it's absolutely important that we accept these processes as an important process to be done. Now, baptism of the Holy Spirit, you cannot... No human being can do that for you. Jesus is the one that can baptize you with his Holy Spirit. You can ask for it because the Bible says that this is for all of us. You can ask for it. And you said, if we evil can give good things to our children, how much more God will give his Holy Spirit to his children. So when we baptize, see what happened next. When Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist in the river Jordan. Then he just came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Holy Spirit. Like Jesus saw the Holy Spirit of God descending on him like a dove and alighting upon him. That was the baptism of the Holy Spirit. See? Jesus himself was baptized in water and the Holy Spirit. So you can't say, oh, Jesus was not baptized in the Holy Spirit, and he's in heaven today, therefore, no, 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 no. He was water baptized and Baptized by the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit came upon him. That's the same that's been baptized. When you are baptized, the Holy Spirit comes upon you. It's like a river. You are immersed in it. It's like you're buried in the water. The same thing. The Holy Spirit came upon him and it lights upon him on his head. And that was when he was in part. And then God said with the voice of heaven, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. So God confirmed the Lordship of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's this is my son. But that voice came only after Jesus fulfilled all righteousness. Only after he was water baptized. Only after he was spirit baptized. Suppose Jesus had said, oh, John, you're right. I don't need to be baptized. Then, how would he have been baptized by the Holy Spirit? Because this is a process. The baptism of the Holy Spirit came only after he came out of that water. See, it didn't happen. If you are not going to the water, the Spirit will not come upon him. Very clear. It's a process. First of all, he went to the water. Then, when he came out, that's when heaven opened. And the Spirit said, Now you will fulfill the righteousness. Now I can come upon you. And this actually happened in the book of Acts. The disciples, you know, when they were baptized, they received the Holy Spirit, dipped in the water, and they received the Holy Spirit. So one must follow the other. Acts chapter 2. Acts 2. Verse 38. To 38. Okay. Acts chapter 2 verse 38. Then Peter said to them, mm -hmm. Repent. Yes. And let every one of you be baptized mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus, Jesus. Christ mm -hmm. for the remission of sins. Yes. And you shall receive the mm -hmm. gift of the Holy Spirit. You see? For the promise is for you and to your children. And to, your children. Mm -hmm. and to all who are far off, mm -hmm. as many as the Lord our God will call. Uh -huh. You see? So the, both baptisms are ordained of God and should be done. Or you should have both. So the second one is done by Jesus Christ himself, but it's for everybody. So you have to ask for it. You may have been baptized with water, but you need the other baptism as well. See? To be baptized, as we refer to the Father in the name of Jesus, for the remission of your sins, for the removal of your sins. That's the first baptism. 
The second was that you shall then receive the gift of the Holy Spirit after you are water baptized. So that water baptism is like a preparation for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You must do that first. It's like a washing away symbolically of your sins. Like for the remission of your, your sins are removed. When you enter that water, it's like a cleansing. The old man dies, is buried away, then the new man comes. And then the Spirit comes upon the new man. The Holy Spirit cannot baptize a man of sin. You see? Until that man is born again, until he makes a confession, until he's cleansed in the water, the Holy Spirit cannot come upon him. See? Jesus did that purpose to show people that this is the process you must go through. You must first be water baptized, then and only then the Holy Spirit will come upon you and receive that gift. See? So he showed it for all righteousness sake. And we need to follow that as well. Nobody should say, I don't need to be water baptized or I don't need to be baptized the Holy Spirit. You need both. Both must be done. And the baptism that should be done should be one when you're an adult. Even though you may have had it as a child, that is not significant because you didn't know you are not even a sinner then. You are not at the age of contability. So if you had died then you are going to heaven because Nobody could count anything against you. You couldn't even speak. You are too young to know what's going on. So the true baptism is an, as an adult. When you know right from wrong, when you know what you've done, when you can confess it. You never heard of a child being baptized by the Holy Spirit after receiving the, the traditional baptism in the church, no? Except those who are both baptized in the Holy Spirit from the womb, like uh, Samson and, uh, and uh, John the Baptist, and all those people, no? So we should correct this the real baptism that god ordains is one way as an adult in this church we don't have a baptism of children we don't do it unlike other churches we don't do it it's only the baptism of adult that we do because that's the one that jesus did and that's one walk we should follow and after that is done you will now receive the baptism of the holy spirit the book of acts Actually, the apostles, I don't know what chapter they did, the apostles were baptized in water, and they baptized some people, some, uh, some disciples, in Acts 12, or something like that. And then they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit afterwards. So this is the process, and we have to thank God for this revelation, thank God for his leading, and for those who are not yet baptized in the Holy Spirit, they can ask for it, as we just read. This is for you and those who call on the name of God. He's ready to baptize with the Spirit. You know? And uh, so for the promise is to you, Acts 2 39, and to your children and to all those who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call. See? So don't say, oh, there's only some special people that are baptized with the Holy Spirit. No, you too can be baptized if you want it. You know? Even if you don't want many times you receive it. So we thank God for this revelation, for this leading. Let us pray. Jehovah Jesus Christ, only Michael, mm -hmm. the, the God of all baptism, the God of all truth and revelation. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the truth you've given to us today, mm -hmm. of the importance and the righteousness of the act of the rite of baptism in water mm -hmm. and baptism by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Father, let us not come short in any of these rites. Let us not depend on our righteousness, mm -hmm. but to know that God is the only one who can give us righteousness. Mm -hmm. That we need to be baptized in water mm -hmm. and also by the Holy Spirit so that we can enter the kingdom of God mm -hmm. according to your word. Thank you for this. 